there. I'm Luna. Hi, and I'm Sarah. Welcome to our home. Yes. Hey, so we're so excited to be with everybody today. And a little bit about me, I'm a comedian and I love engaging with people about play. And I'm a trauma consultant. I help people understand how complex trauma affects our brain and body and how we can join people on that healing journey. Yeah. So today is all about understanding, hmm, like what is regulation, first of all, and how do we bring a sense of play into our lives in a time of crisis? Yes, we're all experiencing kind of a national uh, traumatic moment right now. So what we want to talk about and explore is how can we bring in play? How can we bring in fun? And ultimately, how can we connect back to ourselves to come back to a calm, regulated state? Yeah, for sure. Luna, well, I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's, uh, what's one thing you did today that filled you up, that gave you a sense of joy? <sighs> today, um, I took a walk outside and it was so beautiful. Wow. Yeah. You took a walk, 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 walk. You I took, took a walk. walk, 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 walk. You took a walk and I went took outside. Took a walk and went outside. You took a walk. Beautiful, <laughs> nice. I'm very curious, anyone out there, if there's something that you did today that nourished you, and if you wouldn't mind uh, singing a little ditty with us, if you can just put it in the chat box in the, or in the Q&A there. What's something you did today that nourished you, that filled you up? And while we're waiting for responses, because uh, I know it's a big question, Sarah, what's one thing that you did today that filled you up? I uh, laid in the grass on my ass. <laughs> you laid in the grass on your <laughs> I sure did. You laid in the grass, you laid on your ass, laid on your ass, right in the grass. I laid on my ass, right in the grass. I laid on my ass, right in the grass. Uh, ooh, I Oh, oh, we got, wow, one. We got some. We got oh some. man, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, someone rode a bike while eating chocolate chip cookies. She rode a bike, 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 bike. She rode a bike. Hold on, we already did that one. What else can we do here? She rode a bike while eating a cookie. Rode a bike while eating a cookie. You I rode a bike. I read a book. We're you just gonna go and say it all of them. I read a book. And she rode a bike. I read a book. And she rode a bike. Coffee, coffee in the sun outside. It was so lovely to drink coffee in the sun outside. I'm making bunny puppets out of empty TP rolls. I have empty TP rolls. Empty TP rolls. <laughs> Morning stretches. Oh. Oh. Morning stretches. Morning stretches today. Morning stretches today. Oh my God, that was so fun. Thank you for just typing in. Um, there are so many more, I can't even do it. There's only one more, but we're not gonna do it. I love it, that was awesome. I want to explain a little bit about why we did that, not just because we're delusional in the states of quarantine. We but, are. Well, we are that too. I want to talk a little bit about the brain because one thing that we just did together through play, through laugh, and through singing, those are actual practical ways to help our nervous system come back to a state of calm and balance. So I'm going to teach you about a quick hand brain here. Um, let's see. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry. I gotta go. I have oh. a pot of red beans and rice. I'm just gonna go. Okay, cool, cool, cool. You, you go. I'm gonna stay here with these guys. All right. So you can look up Handbrain. You can look up Handbrain for kids. There are hundreds of videos that show up, and this is the work of Dan Siegel. He's a brilliant neuroscientist, and he talks about this. I'm just gonna show you very quickly what I mean here. Um, if your hand was a brain, the first thing to develop in utero in the womb is your spinal column. And this is the information superhighway between brain and body. All the senses that you receive, they come in through your senses and messages are sent down to every other organ of your body and back again through your spinal column. It's also where your vagus nerve is housed. And I'm going to come back to that in a minute. The next thing to grow again in your brain in utero is your brainstem. And this is in charge of everything we don't think about. 
breathing, digestion, going to the bathroom, all of these things are housed in our unconscious part of our brain. And that's also where our fight or flight mechanism is, right? So when we get really uh, stressed and agitated, we can uh, be, go into a mobilized state where we're fighting or fleeing, or we have that kind of hyper arous hypo arousal where we're in this dysregulated state of, uh, of shutdown and freeze. So all of those survival strategies are here in our brainstem. The next thing to grow is our fear center or our survival center. This is where our limbic system is. And the amygdala here is always scanning for safety or scanning for danger, right? Perceived threat and real threat feel the same in the body. So what we wanna do is make sure that we're working on ways to calm our nervous system so that we can start to scan for safety, not just always be on alert in that danger space. The last thing to grow online is our thinking brain. And this is in charge of logic, consequences, reason, and control. And it's also where language is housed. The reason why I'm bringing up this hand brain is because when we're in a state of distress, so imagine you're in, in the midst of a pandemic and you've got a lot of chaos happening on in your life, what happens is your thinking brain will often go offline in states of stress. And what's in charge are these lower regions of your brain that keep you in survival mode. With the hand brain, it's important to remember that until you feel safe in your body, your thinking brain, in charge of logic and reason, that's not gonna come back online. So first we have to connect with people before we correct. So this part of the brain, when we laughed and when we sang, what was happening was we were developing ways to connect with ourselves in an emotionally safe space so we could come back to a state of calm and a state of balance. Whoa! Oh, oh my gosh! Hey, hey! Uh, Ralphie, yeah. what are you doing here? <laughs> well, I just overheard what you were saying. Yeah. Uh, you, you scared. You flipped my lid, Ralphie. Oh, yeah. Flip you you flipped my lid. You flipped my lid. Well, was oh, you yeah. too fast? That, did that make you feel outside of your body? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Well, I was, my lid was flipped, I think, because I think what was coming up for me, uh, I, I didn't know what you were saying. Like, how oh. do you know when you're offline? Oh. How do you know when your lid get split yes okay yes so that's a great question ralphie i love the question one without awareness we don't have choices so a lot of this your question of how do i know when i get flipped i gotta tune into myself i gotta ask myself when do i notice my states of distress when do i notice my heart beating a bit faster or maybe i can tune into my body and my shoulders are up a bit maybe i'm snapping at people and i have a low frustration tolerance those are all signs that I'm not in my safest, most grounded state. And I might be a bit offline. What if you don't have a body and you're just a flurby made of flurby? Yeah, of course. Flurbies can also tune in to what's in here, Ralphie. You got a whole torso here you can start to tune into oh, and uh, pay attention. I can tune into that too. Yes, you do. Yes. So, uh, well, wouldn't everybody's lid be flipped right now? Great question. Lots of us are experiencing a constant state of this, wondering what's going to happen next. How do we manage our, our kids and our parents and our work and all the things that are, are among us? Absolutely, that can lead to a constant state of, of arousal here. But Ralphie, yeah, I want to know from you, if we think about our brains or even our flurby brains, What's one thing you do to feel safe in your body? Because when we can name that, when we can really pay attention to what helps us feel safe and calm, we can start to do that as a daily practice to get our thinking brains back online. Well, one thing I like to do personally to feel safe in my body, I like to go to the club. <laughs> <laughs> you like I'm what a club, you know what I'm saying? So club like club. Flurbs like flurbs. What do you do with the club, Ralphie? Well, I like to dance. You know, I hear that uh, beat and I start uh, moving and wow. I start shaking. And uh, oh, yeah. I just feel it. I can see. I can, <laughs> even the way you're moving right now, can I tell you something, Ralphie? Yeah. Dancing, right? Singing, play, all of those things. Uh, like I mentioned earlier about the vagus nerve, ways to strengthen the vagus nerve, which tells our nervous system to activate or to come back to a state of calm. The things that help strengthen that vagus nerve are dancing, <gasps> singing, <gasps> humming, <gasps> cold water on the face. What? I'm not gonna do that to you right now, but even though you can't go to the club, you can create the club atmosphere in your own flurby home. Whoa, so people actually like 
throwing cold water on the face. Well, that is uh, something that some people are interested in somewhere. I don't know about us today, but yes. Well, I always see people on the TV, you know, in those movies, they throw the water on their face, and I'm just like, what is this about? They're trying to strengthen their vagus nerve, I guess. I don't know. Well, then (laughs) ask ask Stephen Porges. Then makes a lot of sense. Well, Well, so I can do things to help bring myself back down? Is that how I get my lid unclipped? That's the thing. You can not only do things, but we want to remember that just because you like dancing sometimes, and that helps you feel safe in your body, you need to remember that regulation, right? Physical activities that help you come back to a state of calm and balance. Regulation is a practice. This is something you got to do on a daily, pattern, pattern repetitive way to help your nervous system have a new sense of safety inside. And then, oh, you had a question, Rocky? Well, I just feel like it's so hard to have a sense of every day right now. Mm. There's so much, everything changed, and I don't know what to do. And yeah. it's just hard to, to, to have a sense of routine. So yeah. what do I do about that? Great, great, great question, Ralph. I'm glad you're giving me all the hard ones here. I always think about, with, with the lack of external routine, how do I create that internal routine? How do I start to have some more agency with myself and think, how do I want my days to go? Mm-hmm. When you experience trauma, it's usually the experience of uh, a perceived lack of agency or a real lack of agency and choice in your life. So having some choices, things that you can uh, think about that you enjoy doing every day, maybe if it's just at the same time every day. That can be a practice, dancing, the singing, art, gardening, whatever that is for you, come back to a space of the here and now. Well, wait a minute, Sarah. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. So you're talking about trauma. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the heck, pardon my French, that got to do with what is going on right now because it has nothing to do with trauma. Well, Flurby, I hate to... I hate to call you out on a misinformation, a fake news, but yeah, what's happening right now is uh, a pretty um, universal trauma that all of us in the world are experiencing right now. Not knowing what's coming next, having to feed through a bunch of different information and figure out what's clear. How do we stay, stay, stay safe? Some of us are in our homes all day and that doesn't feel safe. So that's why we have to turn into our internal resources and what can we do to come back to a state of balance? Hmm. Well, you know what? Yeah, Ralph and Sarah, that's really kind of you. And I know I'm just firing away with all these questions, but I don't want to hog all the space like a space hog. Yes. So maybe there's somebody out there that might have a question or two about regulating through crisis and trauma and whatnot. But while we're waiting on them to put that question in the question part of the chat, I got one more question for you. Let's hear it. Well, I feel so lonely. Mm. And other than just popping up and annoying you, I'm mainly by myself. And everybody I know is so far away. And that's really how I get a lot of support from my mm. friends and support. And I just... I really want to hug, you know. I know. Okay, Ralph, I do have something that maybe you could try. Maybe these guys would like to try with this too, in between putting their questions in the chat box. This is something I learned just today, just this morning, uh, from Francesca Maxime out in Brooklyn. I'll tell you what, or sorry, New York. It's called a butterfly hug. And it was, uh, it actually brought me to tears. It was pretty amazing. So what what we do is you take your right hand and you put it under your, your right armpit there just to give a nice grip. You take your left hand and put it over your shoulder here, and you just get a nice squeeze. Maybe take a big, deep belly breath. And just wrap yourself around. And one cool thing you can do is you can actually call your friends on Zoom or on Skype or on all the things, and you can invite them to grab a pillow or to do this same butterfly hug and just ask each other, what's one thing you're super grateful for right now? And as you're naming that gratitude, you can feel that love in your own body. Well, why is gratitude so important? What, what's the point of being grateful nowadays? Well, I'll tell you what, gratitude is an attitude. You gotta have an attitude of gratitude, Ralphie. 
positive thoughts, positive thinking, those are also ways we can use our thinking brain to help bring us back to a state of calm. Oh, I see, I see. Well, I don't know about that, Sarah, but I think it's nice to just try with a little hug or something like that. Yeah. That feels good. It does feel good. I wonder if anyone out here, I'm gonna open up the Q&A. Any questions about regulation through play? Or maybe you have some things that you guys are doing that help you come back into your body and feel safe in your body to get your thinking brain back online. Let's hear from our friends out here, Ralph. Well, Sarah, why don't you tell us what are some things that you do to help get your brain back online? Yeah, well, I obviously like to play. Um, I like to be in the garden and get my hands all dirty with the soil. Sometimes I just like to, again, lay in the grass and mama business. Uh, I like to walk. I like to move my body in that way as well. So, do you like to go to the club? I don't like to go to the club. I have no dancing skills, no rhythm. Can't do it. Oh, that's very sad. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ralphie, though. Those are great questions. You're welcome. Well, pardon me. I, I think I hear somebody calling me. It was nice talking to all of you. Nice being with you, Ralphie. I see we have a, a friend out here talking about TIP, which is a DBT skill. I wish you could uh, put yourself in because I'm not a DBT practitioner. Um, so maybe you can text about it. I can read off in the chat. Um, or we can get another question in here. Oh my goodness. Hey. Oh, Sorry. Hey, what a yeah. back. Sorry to be gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just like, you know, you deal with cooking and stuff, but um, mm -hmm. how are things going? It's good. We're just talking about regulation, how to come back to a state of calm. You know, I think when I uh, think about play, I think about your background. Oh, yeah. With uh, theater and art and drama. And I don't know, how do you, how do you bring play into, into your work that way? Well, <laughs> the funny thing about uh, comedy... <laughs> is that there's this whole theory about uh, tragedy plus time equals humor. But right now, there's not actually much time. So one thing that I've been uh, thinking with and sitting with with myself is like, what are the humorous things that I can joke and play around uh, that are happening to me? And just like, how do I just, sometimes things are just so ridiculous that you just gotta laugh. And laughing feels really good. I'm pretty sure that there's like some sort of brain reason why it feels good to laugh Absolutely. and laugh in unison, but. Well, with laughter and any uh, laughter yoga folks out there would know this, but laughter actually releases dopamine in our brain. Mm. So, which we need dopamine to feel uh, calm and connected and safe in our bodies. So um, that's a great safe way to get those hits of dopamine with a lot of laughter. That makes a lot of sense. And the funny thing is, I think even hearing other people's laughter uh, does a lot for me too, because I don't know if anyone's noticed, but if we're watching these shows where they used to have a laugh track and now there's no laugh track, it just feels so sad yeah, yeah, yeah. someone says anything. So what I've been doing is like enjoying a lot of comedy where I get to laugh or even get to hear that laugh track because it just is really funny for yeah. me. So bringing that into your own home has been helpful. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. We have some questions here. Uh, friend Jaden says, what if I'm scared to try something new? Wow. Mm. That's actually pretty relevant these days because um, while if sometimes it feels like there's not a lot of time, these days are going quick with all the chaos, sometimes the days drag on and there is a lot of time. There's a lot yeah. of time. <laughs> so how do you, how do you uh, get yourself prepared to try something new? Well, one thing that I've been thinking about a lot lately is just, um, I, and in some interesting way, I feel like so many things are breaking open where a lot of the structure that we're used to, a lot of the security that we're used to is all fading away. So I kind of feel like this is the best time to try something new because if you fail, no one has to necessarily watch you unless you're <laughs> Zooming in front of a bunch of random strangers. But like, it, it's a great time. I think it's a great time to fail. And I've been like really excited about mm trying new things and trying mm -hmm. to sing and play piano and doing all these different new things because what else am I supposed to do <laughs> with my time? So trying something new in the comfort of your own home could be a great way to try that out, kind of lean into that vulnerability space 
um, which can be really healing, especially in times of crisis. For sure, yeah. yeah. Do you want to play a little bit? Uh, <laughs> I want, yeah, I know. Or I wonder if we can have our own dance party with Nicole with Ralphie. Well, we could do that, <laughs> but I don't know how typically Ralphie and I are in the same oh, room God at the same time. It. Bad comedic time. <laughs> Let's keep going on. I was trying to uh, try something new, Jaden, and we're just gonna, we're gonna stay here for you guys. Our, our good friend anonymous attendee says, I like to plan a bit of my day the night before to see what I want to get done the next day. And then of course, be flexible. I love that. This is a time for ourselves uh, to give ourselves a lot of grace. Um, also, just like regulation is a practice, giving grace and having self-compassion is also a practice. So there are things we have to keep trying just one day at a time. Yeah, taking everything one day at a time. Mmm, -hmm. there's something else. Ah, Mary said, I'm listening to three meditation tracks daily and I feel calm, but it's the lack of physical contact that sometimes feels traumatic. Absolutely. Um, I, I hope you do use the hug. I think that's one of the things um, I was with the group recently and uh, the overwhelming emotions about, I see my family across the screen, but I miss being in their presence. We know that our bodies, our nervous systems sense our surroundings before our thinking brains do. So it makes a lot of sense when we don't have this close contact, a lot of us are really starving for that, uh, that human connection. So we have to get pretty creative. Yeah. I know. And then I, I think that one thing about this time is like, I think it kind of um, exacerbates or like, it, what, what's the word where it just like magnifies mm. anything that was happening before is now more magnified. Mm -hmm. So maybe if you don't have the best relationship with your family mm. or like you're already feeling kind of like isolated, mm -hmm. now you're extra feeling isolated. So I think that there's a little bit of time and space and compassion for that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, opening a space to grieve a little bit that this is really tough. I know sometimes we want to talk about everything positive going on, but it can be really safe to talk about what's not going well and how can we find support around that too. So. That's the other thing about comedy. I will say this. This is my one comedy tip. This is the best comedy tip I ever got. What makes really good uh, comedy and jokes is really thinking about all the things that annoy you and then talking about that, because that's like where people find connection about. So just thinking about not everything has to be positive, like what are the things that really annoy you? And then how do you, how do you like explore that and unpack that and then really, really go there? Right now, I'm so annoyed by the fact that when I look yeah. at my yeah. crazy Ooh. looking nails, I try to take the gel off myself and it hurts. And there's, of course, obviously, greater problems and issues in the world. But the thing about comedy that's so great and unifying is that those tiny little annoyances speak very big truth to bigger feelings that we sometimes don't have the words for. So just like maybe you might want to keep a gratitude journal, maybe you want to keep an annoyance journal during this time too. A, a hater's journal. A hater's journal. But then at the end of this time, uh, you might find yourself the new Jerry Seinfeld. Who knows? There we go. And then you're trying something new. Speaking of something new, I see we only have a few minutes left. And a friend of mine got really creative. Yes, totally. We'd like to share something. Uh, when it comes to play, obviously there's song, there's dance, there's laughter, there's music. There's all kinds of different things puppetry, et cetera. But there's also uh, some funny things you can do if you engage all other parts of your creative brain. So enjoy our friend, Carrie the Carrot. Oh, hey there. Hi, how are you? Oh, it's so nice to see you. I was just looking out the window. No one's home these days, everybody's indoors. Ah, <sighs> one is the loneliest number that you ever knew. Two can be as sad as one, but the loneliest number is the number one. All right, well, that's all for me. I'm going to go take a nap. Bye. <laughs> 
Oh my gosh. Who, who did we just see there, Luna? That was Carrie the Carrot. <laughs> Carrie the Carrot. And my friend Kate that lived in San Francisco, actually, just decided one day to start making faces on all her vegetables and talking to them because she felt so alone. And I, I thought that was just a brilliant, fun idea of ways that you can kind of explore play and maybe it gets a little like Wilson and cast away like Tom Hanks style, but maybe that's where we're at. And just to have someone to externalize like that lonely feeling or externalize whatever you're feeling. She has like bad vegetables with knives and good vegetables that fight them, but it's bringing her a lot of peace and joy right now. A lot of joy. I love it. Do we have one last question here I'd like to, to get to. Um, when connecting with friends and family, how do we shift beyond the current crisis and talk about other things? How do we, how do we uh, expand our conversation out of this topic? One thing that I like to do is I know it's important to make space to, uh, to discharge your distress, to get things off your mind, but it can be really helpful to set a timer and have a whole round of, all right, what's, what's driving us bonkers, right? How do we get our, uh, kind of get this out of our, top of our mind? And then engage in a group activity together, where, whether it's playing a game online. I know Cards Against Humanity is a, you can do on a kind of a virtual platform. Um, working on puzzles together. Sometimes just being in the same room, reading a book or doing a sing-along. Um, those are some things you can do uh, in communion. Um, and they, they don't feel as isolating if you can uh, join people in this uh, virtual space. I love what you said about setting a timer on it, because I think sometimes if you don't set a timer, it just feels like, oh, we're just sitting in this, we're stewing in it, and the more you talk about it, the more, you know. It'd be overwhelming. Yeah. yeah. And I think just naming that to your friends and family, hey, I want to connect tonight, but what are some other topics we can talk about, right? Mm -hmm. Really setting up the stage that, hey, uh, I want to honor what's happening now, but there are other things outside that we can even start dreaming up. I don't know. You could you could uh, go uh, do a scavenger hunt in your home and bring items back and talk about that book you haven't read in a long time or that picture that was from a loved one that you really haven't reminisced about. So kind of getting in touch not only with ourselves, but our environments um, can be re really healing as well. Yeah, finding old photos, going through those, maybe talking about memories of the past or trying something new again maybe trying to draw and like maybe there's way to like build connection and support around that mm -hmm. and wow look my nail is like it just it just fell off it was it thanks to your power and your creativity <laughs> beautiful well i'm wondering just thinking about that carry the carrot and there's also terry the tomato mm -hmm. and all those different things like we have a little bit of time. We have the last few minutes. Like, there's a group of people right now. How can we be a resource to each other um, to just share ideas of ways that we can connect? And I'm already seeing one make a link to your story cards with the spoken. But if there are, there are other ideas people have around play mm -hmm. or other things that are bringing them joy that they just want to share that they really feel like is important for someone to know, now it's time to just drop that in there. Drop it in the Q&A. We'll just do a rapid fire. What are the things that help you come back to a state of calm or help get you energized and into that space of play? Let's see if we can get name a few here before we all jump off to our next thing. And while we're waiting on that, do you want to say what story cards are? Oh, yeah. So Bespoken, if you go to BespokenLive.org, there are, it's a storytelling troupe that uh, is all about stories that spark contagious and hope, um, contagiousness in hope. <laughs> And um, there's all kinds of great conversation topics that just around four letter words that help us explore um, stories from the past and from the future. So it can be pretty fun. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. All right, everybody. I hope you regulate. I hope you play. And uh, thanks for joining us today for this short time. Thank you so much. Hope to see you soon in person. <laughs> oh, look, we got so many things. Thank y'all for sharing that. <laughs> Woof, 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 woof,